Hello, my name is Lee. I'm sorry I can't be there today, but I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the work that we're doing on the sub-advisory board that supports the work that you're doing today. Um, what we wanted to do was to start off by looking at how we create a partnered approach to local businesses in the Banbury and Bicester area and what it is that we need to develop in order to make that happen. So we started off looking very broadly at what some of the themes are that affect businesses at the moment and we came up with a top list. So what we'd like to do today is to try and give you a sense of what we feel some of those emerging themes are, um, what it is that we can do about those themes and how we can help you, but more importantly, do those themes chime with your own business in terms of what you see happening now and what you see happening in the future. So the first thing on the list is adapting to Generation Y. Um, Generation Y is a massive concern for local businesses. It's something that started as a concern for larger businesses and is now uh, trickling down through to SMEs. 2013, there were a number of key studies that were done that made people really kind of have a knee-jerk reaction. And people realised that Generation Y are about to become the largest consumer group over the next few years. And by in the next seven years or so, they will make up 50% of all B2B travel. And there were lots of other statistics like this. So basically, businesses are beginning to realise that they need to invest in their, in their products and their services to make sure that they're relevant for um, Generation Y. So for example, you've got lots of hotel brands that have been built around the Generation X values and they need to realign their brand. They need newer, funkier brands for Generation Y. The other thing is that um, lots of companies are beginning to realise that they need to invest in their recruitment strategies in order to make sure that they are attracting and retaining the talent of tomorrow, the people that are going to make their businesses in the future. A lot of the other themes that we're going to discuss today come from that. And the reason for that is that in um, our college, we have a, a great deal of Generation Y kind of pioneers, I suppose, the people that are going to be making business in the future and the values that they hold will be really important. So lots of the other themes tie back into this Generation Y idea. Um, the second trend that we have is a growth in video content. We have a very good media department at the college and we noticed that one of the, the solid statistics of last year was that Cisco predicted that 69% of all web traffic by 2017 would be video content. And so in the business community we've seen more outsourcing because people are either scared to do it in-house or they don't have the resources to do it in-house, um, but lots of people are beginning to outsource their video content. Specifically, we're seeing that around short videos, 90-second videos, um, as that's the average amount of time that someone would watch a video on their, on their smartphone or a mobile device. The third trend is content marketing. There's a massive growth in content marketing as display ads are becoming more obsolete. They're becoming less effective. Um, so companies are beginning to look for alternatives and the old, uh, the old maxim of content is king is becoming more and more important nowadays. So therefore we've seen a growth in PR material but also we've seen the channels to market for that material changing. We've now begun to see brands becoming content owners in their own right. You think about Nike or Coke, some of the big brands, they, they own the channels to, to market. The next couple of trends are all around growth the models that businesses use to grow. First of all, we're going to look at outsourced services. So growth via outsourced services is nothing new. It's something that's been around for the last decade or so and companies are very comfortable with it. Um, however, that area is expected to grow. So Gartner predicted a 5.4% annual increase in the size of that market over the next four years. That's going to top $288 billion over the next four years. So SMEs understand the value of outsourced services and they want to do it. However, we came up with a piece of research conducted last year that shows some of the main reasons why they're sometimes reticent about this. The first thing is language. We all know that experience of when you, you phone your telephone company or your gas provider and the phone is answered in another country and there's communication problems and there's a frustration around that. For our own partnered approach, this is all going to be based in Banbury and Bicester in the local area, so there's no problems there. The second concern that businesses have is to do with quality. They feel they may have to compromise on quality if they outsource their services. Well, our organisation is all about quality and um, it's really important that we uphold those standards. The third thing is a concern about the need to train the outsourced agents. And of course, we're a training organisation, there's absolutely no problems there. We have all of that in-house. The fourth concern that they have is that um, a business would have to lose control over what it is they're doing if they employ an outsourcing agent. Um, through our own partnered approach, 
that's not going to be an issue because absolutely we are able to uh, develop specific things for particular businesses and that partnership approach ensures that um, they, they have full control. The final thing is expensive setup fees and what we're proposing is a very inexpensive um, process and it's more going to be based on a contra deal rather than, rather than a, a fee deal. The other method of growth is virtual growth. So with less cash in the market, virtual opportunities are becoming much more attractive. Um, this is generally done through partnerships. So you see, for example, uh, business magazines partnering with event organisers to be able to achieve something that's good for both of them. Um, our own desire to create partnerships with the local businesses is chiming with this trend, I think. The sixth trend on our sheet is to do with social media and particularly the idea that social media is not actually zero cost. I think in the past when social media was relatively new it was always seen as a sideline in the marketing department. There was no one really responsible for social media, it was something that was just conducted within an organisation and it was seen as something that was free. Um, however, the cost of social media is going up. We've seen a growth in mobile devices um, mobile devices now outsell desktop computers. That happened for the first time in 2013. What that means is that there has been a growth in social media and therefore a proliferation in the channels. So therefore the, the cost to sustain the quality of any social media marketing campaign is increasing. Also the need to monitor and engage your consumers through those campaigns and through those channels is also increasing. Um, and we feel that Again, having a college full of Generation Y uh, pioneers, we have a, a group of social media pioneers who are very, very good at this. They're very well versed in social media and understand it. So there's some obvious synergies there. Leading on from this, we have Solomo. Uh, for the uninitiated, that stands for social, local and mobile. Three technologies which are beginning to come together. So there's a convergence of these three things and we now have a trend in Solomo. Um, SMEs are just beginning to cotton onto this, or perhaps they're not really aware of Solomo. They're certainly not aware of its power. It's something that's currently owned by big brands, and big brands are investing heavily in developing Solomo strategies. Um, more generally, this means that big doesn't beat small anymore. We're, uh, we're entering a new age of business where, where small niche communities of people, niche content, niche products, um, can gain a greater market share and Solomo is part of the technology that does that. Business is going local. The eighth area that we've identified is a need for businesses to find more creative financing opportunities. So the FSB recently said that there was going to be a rapid expansion in 2014 as the economic conditions improve in the UK. Um, a third of businesses will be running at full capacity and a quarter of business owners are hoping to invest and they're hoping to employ new people. All of that is fantastic news. However, getting the cash flow to be able to do that and putting the financing in place is still a chief stumbling block for many businesses, especially some of the smaller SMEs. So um, they're beginning to look at alternative methods, alternative methods of financing the growth areas of their business. One of the most obvious one that uh, I think probably most of you already know about is, is crowdfunding. The idea that lots of people, lots of investors can put a very small amount into a particular initiative and, uh, and fund it that way. There is a real opportunity here for us. The idea of outsourcing a service through partnership could be really key and could offer local businesses an alternative way to fund areas of growth. So as an example, the existing staff in an organisation could be redeployed into the growth areas of the business, those customer facing growth areas that where you need all of that talent in place, whilst our students through a partnered um, approach could prop up some of the existing services. Exactly what that would be is a bit of a mystery at the moment. We don't really know, but, um, but there is a key opportunity there. The final trend is nothing new. CSR has been around for a long time, and, but it's continuing to grow in importance for local businesses. Corporate social responsibility is not just about going green anymore. Um, businesses realised this quite a while ago. It's now much more about community. What it is that you can put into your local community and some of the, the positive PR and some of the cost savings that come from that. Ultimately, this is the best USP that we're offering and we feel that there's some synergy with that idea and the partnered approach that we want to take to local businesses. Many thanks for taking the time to listen to this and we really hope that some of what you've heard today chimes with your own businesses, either the challenges you currently face or the challenges you see coming down the line. 
I have to admit, it's a highly angled list. It's based around some of the areas that we feel that we can affect. The list could, of course, be endless. You will face many multiple challenges in your various businesses. But this particular list of issues seems pertinent to our students and what we can offer. So we look forward to hearing your feedback uh, and we look forward to using that feedback to helping us to continue to develop our partnered approach to local business. Thank you very much.